How's it going ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Donnie here again. This time we're gonna take a look at some practice problems for vapor pressure. All right, so number one, the vapor pressure of a liquid, does it increase or decrease as temperature increases in a, is it linear or nonlinear fashion? Well, as temperature goes up, the vapor pressure is going to increase in a nonlinear fashion. So if you look at the charts, they look like a curved line uh, you know, this image right here, right? It's showing the vapor pressure increases and it's not a straight line linear fashion. It's in a non-linear fashion. All right, number two, based on the figure above, really below, uh, what is the boiling point of propanone under an external pressure of 1.32 atmospheres? So if we take a look at the units on this chart, they're in kilopascals. So I'm gonna have to convert my 1.32 atmospheres into kilopascals. So I know that for every one atmosphere, there is 101.3 kilopascals. So when I do the math, beep, bop, beep, bop, boop, I end up with 134 kilopascals. So I look to my chart, 134 is gonna be roughly 110, 120, 130, 134 right here. And the gas or the liquid I'm looking at is propanone. So propanone, that line, I follow it over, boom, I hit it right about here, and I follow it down, that is at about 65. So at 65 degrees Celsius, propanone will have a vapor pressure of 1.32 atmospheres. Same kind of problem, based on the figure above, really below, what is the boiling point of ethanol under an external pressure of 0 0.0724? So we know that the boiling point is when your vapor pressure equals the external pressure. So it's really asking, at what temperature will ethanol have a vapor pressure of 0 0.0724 atmospheres? So again, this chart is in kilopascals, so I gotta do this 0 0.0724 atmospheres times by uh, 101.3 kPa over one atmosphere. And when I do that, I get roughly about seven kilopascals. So I got to find seven on the chart here, which is probably like right about there and see where that intersects with the ethanol line, which is like right about right, right there. I would, I would even say it could be over here. So somewhere between 20 and 25 degrees, I might go with 20 degrees Celsius because it's kind of hard to tell on this chart where seven is exactly. Uh, so if you put something in between 20 and 25 degrees, totally great. What about this one? Based on the figure above, what is the boiling point of water? So I'm looking at this line under an external pressure of 0.493 atmospheres. So again, I got to convert my 0.493 atmospheres to kilopascals. So 0.493 atmospheres times 101.3 kilopascals per one atmosphere. And I get roughly uh, like 50 kilopascals. So 50 kilopascals is on this line right here, uh, and I want the boiling point of water at that pressure. So I follow that line over, it hits about here, follow that line down, and I get roughly you know, 83 degrees Celsius. Number five, what is the vapor pressure of any substance when it's at its normal boiling point? So the normal boiling point is at one atmosphere of pressure. That is the definition. So. What is the vapor pressure at its normal boiling point? It's gotta be one atmosphere. So looking at this, boom, there you go. All right, number six, when at the same temperature, which would have the lowest vapor pressure, meaning it'd be the least likely to go into the gas phase. So if I want the lowest vapor pressure, I want the strongest attractive forces. They are holding on to each other so well that it's really difficult to go into the gas phase. So if I take a look at all my options, they're all London dispersion uh, forces because they're nonpolar. So all these nonpolar molecules have London dispersion. If I'm talking about the strongest attractive forces, I want to increase the mass. So I'm looking for the most massive of my options. It's choice A. All right, I hope you found that helpful. I'll see you in class. Okay, bye.